So today I'm taking a break from the salt and I'm headed to the fresh with my good friend Rob. We're going to be fishing the Muscoot Reservoir for yellow perch. Yellow perch today and hopefully some trout. Awesome. I'm really looking forward to it and uh, hopefully I don't fall. Like, How is it with the ice and everything? The ice is over a foot thick. It's 16 to 18 inches in some places. Right. Completely safe. Nothing to worry about. We got some great weather today. Awesome. Awesome. So we're not going to really freeze and um, there's action out there. So. And by this, a foot deep, basically, I could drive a car on that. Absolutely. Amazing. If we didn't have the trees here, we could drive out there, but it's a New York City reservoir, and that would be illegal. I'm looking forward <laughs> to it, so let's go catch some fish. Let's do it. Awesome. Yeah, so we're going to be fishing on this side, inside of the channel. Gotcha. In the deeper water, hopefully to pick up a tr cruising trout. Love to get a trout today. And here you go, you can see your cracks again. So what is that, just the, uh, the ice shifting with the current that's in here? The ice, when the sun's on it, the ice is going to flex. Oh, wow. It's going to swell, it's going to crack, it's going to make noises as the uh, afternoon goes on. Tell me a little about this rig, actually, that we're using. So, What we have here is a <clears throat> regular ice fishing line, nothing fancy, it's like 12 pound test. So when you mean ice fishing line, you're talking about this right here? Yes, it's a waxed uh, braided line. Wax braid, okay. Right, it's a six pound leader. Okay, oh, and that's a, a monofilament that would be? Yeah, this is a Berkeley trialing. Okay, so basically any type of mono. Yep, and a number four hook. Gotcha, okay. And we're going to use a real small shiner. Okay. And that's a number four, not a 4.0. Correct. So you know. And the bait of choice today would be? Shiners. Shiners, okay. And that's a bait found in these waters? I really don't know. But they sell them at the tackle shop. Then it works. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they catch fish. All right, so right? we're going to do is we're going to drop him down. This bobber is going to act as a line marker. Gotcha. So we're going to put him about three feet down, about okay. a foot and a half under the ice. And is that a split shot? That's yep. a little split shot. A little split shot to hold him still. And we'll set the trigger. We're fishing. And that should pop up. So now once a fish hits that, that flag's going to pop up. When the fish hits, up. this will pop up. Okay. And this will spin, indicating... Fish is running. Right. Excellent. And we should see a couple of those today. Oh, yeah, right there. There you go. There you go. There you go. Slow, man. Oh, I got what he got. Here, pull him up. Can I see the magic pool? Yeah. <laughs> a little yellow perch. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Dinner. Dinner? Yeah, you got to be careful. These th these pecs right here will really hurt yeah, you. Yeah, sure. And there's two down here. And that's a yellow perch. Mm -hmm. Now, would that be a keeper size or no? He's borderline keeper. I think I'm going to let him go because okay. I want some of the bigger fish today. Tell me about this setup we're using today. So you have this little hummingbird, I guess, fish finder. Yeah, it's a 345 CI, and I have it on the flasher mode right now. The good thing about this unit is it has multiple screens, so it gives you bottom contour, gives you split screen. I actually have it on flasher mode, and what you're seeing on the screen, the depth is 15.8 feet. That mark is the bottom. Okay. The zero here is the ice, and that flash is actually a minnow I have on this dead stick in this hole here. Okay, yeah, do that again. You could actually see it move when you did yeah, that. When you pull up on the line, you could actually see it go up and down. Gotcha. And I have that set three feet off the bottom, and this is the jig I have on. So that little jig right there was coming up crystal clear on that machine. It was able to pick that little piece up. Yes, from the bottom to three feet up. That's amazing. And I just have it dressed up with some spikes or maggots, and it's a rattling jig. It actually has a rattle in it, so okay. you, it calls fish in. It's been working pretty good this morning. We this morning we did pretty good, and we we jigged up a quite a few perch out of the hole. But the fish moved on. These are some of the some of the perch that we jigged up. How's a fight on the perch on these little rods? They actually fight pretty good. I mean, this is a, a a medium rod. It's not a light action. It should be using a lot lighter. That's why this rod here I actually have the spring bobber on, so you can detect the bite. Because sometimes what they do is they just inhale the bait. Uh -huh. They don't actually run with it. They inhale it, and you don't even see it or feel it on the actual rod tip. So the spring bobber is actually a really fine indicator. It helps you uh, see the bite that you would normally miss that you wouldn't feel. Gotcha. But uh, they've been pretty aggressive today. They're in here spawning. All these females, big females are in here. They're full of eggs. And they're actually pretty aggressive when they come upon your jig. They actually uh, they give you a nice little bite. Let me ask you one more question, though. Just now, when you were moving that jig, I heard a little beep. You have, like, a beep indicator or something? It's actually a fish indicator. Whenever it, it, a fish comes up on the screen, it actually will beep. Gotcha. There is a tiny, there's a, on this it. line is a, is a small shiner. So it's actually picking up the shiner. It actually, what it does is it picks up on the airspace in the fish. So this is kind of like a little wicked tuner, but at a smaller version. <laughs> exactly. And you hit a beat, there the goes shiner. the rod. 
and he's basically just dead sticking. They call it dead sticking because I'm not actually doing anything to the rod. I'm not jigging it. I'm not moving it. He's just laying below. And the theory behind this is I'm trying to call fish in, and if they don't go for my bait that I have on my jig, they might go for the, uh, the shiner impaled on the little jig head. So that's the theory. And as you can see it on the screen, it's going down. It's yep. 7 feet now, 10 feet now. And I have it set at about 12 and a half feet. Flag, flag, flag. Oh, this one's going, this one's going. Oh, we got a runner. This one's going. He's on there. Let's see what we got here. Oh, nice, yellow perch. Did I just lift him out? Yep. Nice. Oh, he swallowed it in this one. These tip-ups here are set in about six feet of water, and we know that because there's two ways to do it. You can either do it with a sounder and drop it to the bottom, but I have an electronic sounder where you drop it in the hole, and it'll actually come up with the depth, which is actually four feet here. So what I'm doing is I'm setting my tip-ups just off the bottom because the perch are pretty much from the first three feet of water on the bottom, and what they're doing is they're cruising the area looking for a forage, either little minnows or microscopic invertebrates that live in the grass. So these here I have set right on the weed edge because the weed edge falls around this point and then spreads out into this shallow bay. And this is one big bowl in here that drops off to about 18 feet where our deeper tip-ups are, where we're trying to target either bass or trout or pickerel. We haven't had any luck with trout yet, but we did get some pickerel and no bass yet either. But that's the theory behind setting up your tip-ups. And depending on the species of fish you fish for, will depend on tippet placement and also bait placement. The perch are primarily on the bottom, so you want to set your baits deeper down, where trout pretty much cruise closer mid-water to under the ice, so you want to set your baits further up. Eugene, I see you have a lot of fancy stuff here, but if I just want to get started on ice fishing, just what's the basic uh, tackle I should buy? Yeah, you're right, you don't need all this fancy stuff, but the first thing you need, most importantly, is a fishing license. Once you get a New York State fishing license, all you really need is a couple traps okay. or tip-ups, and then a couple uh, jigging rods if you want to jig also, and an auger. And to be safe on the ice, you would want to get a good pair of cleats, because when the ice is really slick, you can't even stand on the ice, and you won't even be able to drill a hole. You'll be turning yourself in circles trying to drill the hole. Gotcha. <laughs> but that's basically the, the basic, basic, basic equipment you need. A couple tip-ups, an auger, and maybe a ladle to scoop the ice out of the hole, and that's all you need to get started. That's it. It's so a very simple sport. A beginning package, you're talking about $100 can get you on the you ice? Even, even less than that. Really? Yeah. You can be fishing. That's great. Now, what about do's and don'ts for someone that doesn't know? Always go with somebody. Never go alone. Okay. Always check ice conditions first. Try to go to your local tackle shop and get information or go online. They have all kinds of forums, ice fishing forums. You can go online and find out where people have been fishing, mm -hmm. where the ice was safe, or how <clears> thick <throat> the ice is, ice conditions. Um, it really varies depending on the season and where you are and also where you are in New York State. Some places get more ice, some places get less. Here it's a little fickle. Some years we have great ice, some years we have you know, horrible ice. This year happens to be a really good year. It was very cold. We had a good day today fishing on the Scoot Reservoir. I want to thank Gene and Rob for taking us and showing us what to do. Caught a bunch of these yellow perch. Please visit our webpage at www.chasetailtv.com and thank you for watching.